Hey there, welcome back to my channel. So in this episode, we're going to create our first microservice that is user service. And we're going to expose all the endpoints, required endpoints for our user microservice. Right before create the user service, let's go a little bit back. And in the previous episode, here you can see here while uh, we have discussed regarding the technology selection. And uh, we can see uh, we have the two ways where we have decided to go with the serverless, right? Uh, besides the ser server approach, because uh, I have already explained in that episode why we have dec decided to go with the serverless approach. And in the serverless approach, we have a plenty of options, which is called AWS CDK, serverless framework, and other options as well as. So uh, for user service, we are going to kickstart up the serverless framework because why? We are going to get some kind of the basic information uh, regarding the cloud permissions and infrastructure as a code in the serverless framework way. After that, we are going to work on the AWS CDK. And by the time uh, we are, while we are working on the serverless framework, then we will be getting a lot of information related to uh, infrastructure as a code and the cloud permission and some of the core component of the AWS infrastructure as well as. Then it will be, it will be easier for us to, to pick it up from here, okay? All right, so let's create our project with the help of the serverless framework. Um, uh, first, uh, I'm going to uh, check my node version. Node version, and you can see I am using node version 16.15.1. And you can also install any version of the node, which is uh, at least minimum 16. Point, uh, something, right? Uh, right before create the user service, I just want to make you understand why we are using serverless framework. So in the traditional way, while we are just creating the AWS Lambda, it's 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 not that seamless. If you go to this uh, AWS portal, you know, in the Lambda functions section, okay, uh, log into your portal, then you can go here and you can see this Lambda and you click here, then you it'll it'll throw you to this page. And right now here, if you click on the create application, you can see a whole bunch of stuff is there, right? And uh, these are the application sections. And if you can, if you go to this function section, then you can create a function right here. And uh, you can you can create you can use your blueprint or container image or anything. But as a kind of normal function, you just need to put your name in my function. Let's say my function. And this my function, we have something like the uh, node version, right? Here it is 18 or something. But in our case, we are going to use 16. So you just select your node version, and then you can just create a function. Once your function is created. Yeah, the function is created right now. Then you can just add the code right here. Okay, and this can can you see? This is the function exactly, right? And you just imagine for our user service, if we if we have a plenty of functions, right? Which is called sign up and login and and verify profile and the card account. And you can see the each, each version of the function we have uh, various methods also in terms of uh, the sign up and login and the verify. It has only one method which is called post, right? Post HTTP method. But the profile we have the three uh, three varieties of the method like you know the post the post to get or something else. So in this case, how painful it will be like to to maintain this kind of stuff in by creating these functions from here, right? So that's why this serverless is coming to the picture, which is uh, which is uh, reducing all the overheads and it is giving you a kind of flexibility to create the whole project in one go and you can add your all these informations regarding how many functions you have needed or what are the endpoints exactly it is needed here, right? Um, all those things you can you can declare like as a kind of declarative approach where you will you will declare the cloud permissions, right? And it's a, it's nothing special. It's a kind of blueprint of the infrastructure. What are the functions or function executions requirement, memory needs, or uh, ARN access and network and other resources description, it will be there in, in, in the infrastructure as a code section. And uh, you no need to focus on the building the all the stuff in different different way, you can just purely focus on the, uh, the, the, the application logic, right. So that way, uh, the serverless framework is accommodating uh, the seamless deployment as well as Right. So every time, whenever you have something, you are updating the or your code, you are adding some functionality, you're removing some functionality, and you just push your code to the GitHub and it will deploy automatically. So that's why we are we are we are decided to go with the serverless framework. Okay, let's go to these uh, the serverless framework documentations here. This is the site serverless.com. And uh, if you go uh, on here in the products, uh, in the documentation section, docs, and click on the getting started and you can see this page. So this is the thing we need to install first. Okay, 
So first we have already node person. So let's install sudo does z serverless. Okay. All right. So it is installed right now. Perfect. So you can check the version. Uh, SLS does this version. You can see this is the version exactly it is using. Okay. And uh, one more thing we need to install. Uh, that is the uh, go to the AWS command line inter interface here AWS dot uh, Amazon dot com slash CLI. You, you will get the options for install uh, the specific AWS CLI in your in your machine. Okay. So uh, and I'm using Mac, so I'm just going to click this one. Then it is going to be installed, right? So this is installed uh, successfully. All right, so why AWS CLI is needed? Because with the help of the AWS CLI, we're going to deploy our application. All right, so I'm inside my project directory. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create the, uh, the project, SLS. Uh, if you type SLS, then you can see the, there are a lot of, there are a bunch of stuff, it is there, right? So what we are interested exactly, we are interested on HTT and not just HTTP API. Select this one, okay. So it is asking me questions. Uh, uh, what do you want to make the AWS node that's fine? And what do you want to call this project? So in my case, we are going to create as a call as a user, user service, user, user service, okay. And yeah, it is, it is downloading the template, right? Now, I don't wanna uh, use any kind of organization because I have uh, plenty of deployment with the uh, serverless, so that's why I have this um, uh, organization. So in your case, you can just simply skip it, okay? We don't wanna deploy it right away because we need to add some codes, uh, no. And now it is created. Let's see, yeah, this is our user service. Now, switch to our user service directory. All right, and there are three files are there. Let's open this one with the Visual Studio Code. Okay, perfect. So uh, minimize this one. And no, I go. And all right. So this is our project. Now let's explore what are the uh, the the project file that is there. So uh, this is the main file, which is called serverless YAML file. Here you can see, and uh, this is the whole code where we are writing the infrastructure as a code. All right. So you can see our provider is AWS, right? And our, this is our, our uh, user service name, right? This service is user service. And uh, our framework version is three. Uh, and uh, this is the framework version of the serverless framework version, all right? And after that, the uh, runtime we are using, uh, it is by default, it's giving node 14, but we are going to use node 16. And this is the function, which is our basic endpoints. Right, which is root endpoints. If we are going to hit this endpoint, then it is going to call this uh, handler dot hello function, right? Which is going to give any kind of like response if you're uh, going to call this endpoints, right? There's nothing special. It's very very tiny stuff or very crystal clear stuff, right? So let's go to the handlers. That's what exactly it is. It has. So once you are calling this this root directory or this root path, right? Then it's a kind of method is a get call, all right? And then it will it will trigger this this lambda function, okay. And once this is like triggered, here some kind of logic is going to be happen. We are going to add some logic. Then it will return the specific response to this one. And you can see the response is strictly uh, some uh, some. It's a kind of structured response. You can say strictly structured. So we, we you should have to have a kind of status code. It may be any numbers, and we should have to have a kind of body which is going to be a kind of string, right? That is we are we are just putting right here. Uh, that's all. So it's very straightforward. So what we are going to do in this case, uh, it's it's handler.js is written in the JavaScript. Uh, so we are not going to use JavaScript anymore because uh, there are a lot of uh, issues are there while we are uh, building microservices, a lot of type safety stuff it's, we need to take care. So those are the things uh, we are going to take a late right here in this project. So uh, first of all, we need to install a couple of dependencies. So what are the dependencies we can install here? So let's, uh, anyway, we are we are going to use the TypeScript, make sure we have installed the TypeScript as well as. So I'm using uh, TypeScript globally. It is install TypeScript is installed. And now what we need to do, uh, we need to install a couple of more dependencies because if you go and see this one here, because user service is using AWS Lambda, which is going to execute on the on the cloud platform here. 
this one is going to be executed on the cloud, right? In AWS, AWS, all right? So uh, while we are running the application, we need to test it, right? We need to check each and every functionality, how we will test it in our local environment. That's why we need a kind of plugin which is needed for running the whole thing on the in our local machine, which is called serverless offline. So this is we are going to uh, uh, install. So let's install this one. So first of all, um, let's uh, create our JSON file. Uh, package the JSON file, npm init, that's just why. Okay, so this is uh, created our initial JSON file. All right, so now let's install our serverless plugin. And this SLS plugin install is triggering our our serverless um, serverless framework CLI, and which is helping out to installing the plugin. And you can see once this is installed, then we, it will be appear right here as well. Okay, so it is installed. You can see the serverless plugin is it's added. A second thing because we are going to use the TypeScript as well as so let's add the TypeScript uh, plugin stuff. Okay. All right, we have installed the serverless plugin TypeScript, which is going to support us to execute our TypeScript files uh, here in the serverless framework. So uh, it will help us to build the whole thing and, and it will compile the TypeScript files and it will it will create a bundle and where the common JS is going to be executed on the server. So that's why actually we have added this one, the serverless plugin uh, TypeScript support here, okay. All right, after that, let's create a TypeScript configuration file here. All right, so this is our TypeScript configuration file. It's created. Now let's uh, install a couple of dependencies for our uh, this package suggestion file. We're going to install uh, npm. All right, so now from the all aspect, we are we are complete. There is no more configurations, only a couple of line we need to add in the TS config file. So let's delete all the stuff from the default configurations, which is uh, created uh, from here, right? So so first of all, we, we need to add module. Module will be common.js, common.js. Okay. All right, so this is our TS config file. So these are the configuration we have added for our compile options, where especially we are using the module as a common JS, target as ES6, and um, we are we are, mod we are keeping as a module resolution of a node. And you can see the experimental declaratory is just keeping as a true, right? And base URL just to try to keep it as a kind of root directory, right? And skip lib check. We are just keeping it true. So these are the configuration we are going to follow, and we are going to include our our app directory, and after that inside the app directory, whatever the file structure and the all the files, uh, which is called uh, extension by ts, we are going to include it, and we are going to especially exclude the, the node modules. So these are the things we are going to uh, we have added here in the in the ts config file. Okay, let's close this out. Okay, now. Uh, let's close this one as well as, and let's delete this handler file, delete. And right now in the serverless YAML file, let's add a couple of uh, the, the routes here. So in the in the in the first route, which is going to be our, which is called sign up, and this this is not going to be handler. We're going to create a kind of directory, which is uh, here called app directory. Okay, inside the app directory, we'll be having all. Uh, app directory handler dot if sign up okay and this is going to be sign up All right so we are just a profile and just to test it like the 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 specific route is working uh, uh, right after configure the TypeScript or not we need to check that's why I'm just keeping it get and once this, that is done we'll be uh, changing to the post right so now this sign up handler the sign up is not there right this is doesn't exist at all so let's create that this sign up dot uh, handler dot sign up function. Uh, let's create a file. This is called handler dot ts, right? 
Right, so let's add some code to the handler in order to support this uh, this URL, right? This sign up URL. I'm gonna add the codes quickly and then I will just explain it. All right, so we have added some code in the sign up function. So uh, let's call this sign up function. Then we will explain what is it exactly and why uh, we are just putting this stuff, right? And how to call this sign up function, you can see in the serverless YAML file, we have already added this. This is the app directory and this is the handler and handler has a kind of uh, function which is called sign up. Uh, make sure like this name and this name it has matching, okay? So uh, I'm maybe it's, it, it, it is capital letter like sign up. So we need to keep it as well as in the same way. Sign up. So this is the function name, right? Now, uh, now what we need to do uh, in order to run this application, right, in the local machine, uh, we need to add a little bit configuration on this package.json uh, file where the script is going to be uh, called, right? So in this case, we are going to remove this uh, test. We will add later uh, as a kind of putting uh, the script as a dev. And inside here, we're putting us serverless serverless offline that's all all right so let's spin our server so we're going to run yarn or run dev because this dev it's it's yeah we have added right here right this is the script and if you're gonna run this one then you can see this our server is successfully it's it's uh, it's turned right it's turned on and you can see it's spinning on the 3000 right and uh, uh, this is our endpoint so let's uh, let's check it out like what are the things we have in this endpoint so while we are going to hitting this uh, the endpoint then the serverless yaml file will be provide that specific request from here if it is coming as a get if it is matching this one then it will be sending up to uh, a calling this this specific function which is called sign up and once this sign up function is going to be triggered then it will execute the whole business logic whatever business logic we are going to write here Uh, that is going to be executed and after that it will return back the data. All right, so we need to put this one as async Okay, because uh, all the requests it's a kind of asynchronous request that is we need to make sure perfect now we can see What is accepting in this event, right? Event is accepting as a kind of API gateway proxy event, right? So we are using the version 2 here, if you go to the API Gateway Proxy event, you can see it has a lot of stuff which is there, which is called Request Context, and Request Context has all the information regarding all the requests, um, whatever we are sending from that uh, from the client. So let's uh, try to call this function so we can get a kind of better understanding regarding this event. Anyway, we are just logging it here. So let me clean up the whole uh, thing right here. Uh, maybe here, and let's go to this uh, browser. 3000, 3000 and sign up, right? If you, if we hitting this endpoint, you can see response from response from sign up, right? And if you go here in the console, you can see whole bunch of what are the uh, things exactly it is uh, accepting from this event, you know? And then you can see it here. We, we don't have, a, we are not posting any body. You can see cookie headers, right? Request contacts. So this is the this is the most important one, which is we are going to use to over uh, throughout the application. And this is the routing key, all right? And, and this is the staging variable, and this is the version number. Okay. So this is the initial basic idea about how uh, the the serverless is working uh, in terms of the HTTP API. So let's add some more more code. Then we will be will be getting more understanding about uh, how to structure our application as well as. See you in the next episode. If you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe it. This masterclass series will have a lot of advanced stuff which will help you to improve your career goals and landing a better job opportunity. Thank you.